Um, so the title of what I want to talk about tonight is Soil Seasons. Um, who here would like to be able to sync their calendar with God's calendar? And I'm sure we all would love that. It would help out a whole lot. But for many, right away, it doesn't seem like a hard thing to comprehend or a hard thing to do. But what makes it so challenging is that God doesn't mark a specific spot on the calendar called harvest season. If he did, then we wouldn't have a hard time occupying ourselves during that waiting season. So if you know that right at 27 you were going to get married, or you knew on April 3rd all your bills were going to be paid for, you wouldn't have a problem just trying to survive and coast and make it by until that time when you knew everything was going to be all right. You would think, okay, I just got to survive till then, and I'll be set. We tell God, God, I could be ready to harvest what you have for me if you tell me when the harvest is coming. I can have everything set up. I can have my finances all set up so that when it happens, I can cash in correctly and have all my ducks in a row. So let me ask you a question. How do you relate to a God in patience when he won't show you what schedule he's working off of? Mark 4.26 says, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters his seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the sock, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. You see, the real test of the seed is can it survive the soil? When digging up the soil to plant the seed, there's a whole lot of happiness, a whole lot of joy, because you're thinking, I get to plant this seed, and I'm so excited for what comes next. When the harvest comes, we're all excited, because now we've waited all this time, and this is what we've been waiting for. And there's just so much joy that fills up inside of us. But once it's in the soil, that's when the waiting begins. And a lot of times, that's the hardest time for a lot of people. You see, a lot of dreams, I believe, have died in the soil. I think that's where a lot of marriages have died, is in the soil. I think that's where most good intentions give way to apathy, is in the soil. The hardest part of the seed's life is in the soil. And they don't know if they're going to get any water. They don't know if they're going to get any air or any sunlight, because all there is around them is just darkness. It takes faith to sow, yes. It takes faith to reap, yes. But it takes even more faith to be buried in the soil of uncertainty and keep growing. Because around us is such darkness, we can't see what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen next. We don't know where provision's going to come from. You never know how long you're going to be in that soil. Some things take longer to grow than others. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. You just got to sit tight and live and let God. When that seed is in the ground and it needs water, there's not any rain. It begins to dig and place its roots down deep in the soil and dig for water. If it's not coming from the top, you've got to get it yourself. So what I'm telling you now is you've got to root yourself in the word. You've got to keep digging for that nourishment to fill yourself, and you've got to keep moving forward. You can't quit. You can't give up. When Moses and the Israelites were standing at the Red Sea with no way around it, and they got the entire might of the Egyptian army behind them, breathing down their neck. Moses looked to God and said, what am I going to do now? God said, stick out your staff. Suck out his staff. God made a way where there seemed to be no other way. And there's times when you're in that soil season, and you don't know what to do or what's going to happen. But you've got to get rooted in what God has for you, despite the darkness, despite the lack, despite the struggles, despite the loneliness, despite all that may come against you, you've got to be ready to just sit tight and hold on to what God has told you. You've got to dig and get rooted in his word and know that he's going to take care of you during that season. Like the old song goes, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Because a lot of us are sitting there in that soil season, not knowing what's going to happen. But we've got to trust the man who placed us in that soil season, that what's going to happen next is going to be far greater than where we started out. We came into this all excited thinking we're going to become something great. We're going to become something great. But the whole time we're sitting there waiting, we don't know what's going to happen, and we're just like, oh, maybe I'm not going to do anything. Maybe I'm not going to take root in this soil. Maybe it's too dry. Maybe there's nothing for me here. Maybe I'm just going to die. 
and we think the place that we've been planted lacks so much and that there is nothing there for us to really grow and develop. But that's where we've got to put our faith and our trust in God. And it, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's easy to go and dig the hole and plant it. It's easy to go and harvest it and collect everything we've waited for. But that entire time we are sitting there waiting, just waiting. And like I said, you, there's nothing you can really do. You've just got to wait on God. His timing is perfect. So I'm here to tell you today, trust the process, get rooted, embrace your soil season, and get ready for the harvest God has waiting for you.